Thank you so much. Where's the uh, one hand to the, 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 the bathroom? The dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I mean, this is uh, too much to handle for a normal Q&A. So we're going to have a fireside chat now. Mm -hmm. Let me go to the front. Go. So this is too much information to take in. Why is my microphone not working? Hello? One, two, three, four. <laughs> uh, boom. Okay. Here we have. So there's a bit more information to take in a normal Q&A. So that's why we organized a fireside chat where we're going to have a more in-depth conversation. And if, if the World Wide Web is anything to go by, you're good with solid technology. So hopefully the new stuff will be something as interesting and as big. Did you ever think, like, what, what could you have done differently at the beginning? Would you have done, like, something like identity into the platform if I, you had the chance again? I, I think I made a mistake using the... Yeah, I think I made a mistake using DNS. Well, when the main name system, when I used it early on, it was managed in the public interest yeah. by John Postel, and now the domain name is a mess of... It's, uh, the domain name system, uh, there's just... Too much. Well, Com especially commercial. We needed uh, so many more DNS numbers as well. We needed more IP numbers. We needed. A, uh, it was growing so fast. At the beginning, we thought there was only, only going to be websites, but then everything needed a DNS lookup, and mm. it becomes one of the slowest things I see nowadays. You go to something, and there's like five hops before you start loading the first bit, and that's mm. the dissemination across different uh, 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 different networks is not as fast as it used to be. Right. Well, so, I mean, I'm not the one who's going to interview you, sadly enough, because okay. obviously uh, I'm not the developer here. So I want to introduce again Seat Atemovic to come back on stage and start with the fireside chat here. If he's ready. Hi again. You just take your seat. Thank you, Christian. Okay. Thank you, Satem. You're very All right. You're welcome. Enjoy. Thank you. So welcome to this fireside chat with Sir Tim. So we'll spend the next half an hour uh, talking about uh, not just your keynote, but generally about the web and software development. So thank you again for being our guest today. And I would like to open this chat with the most important question that we have seen in software development in the last decades tabs or spaces. When it comes to your coding, what do you use? And what is the right answer? And is there one? So uh, well, uh, tabs or spaces depends on your, um, it depends on your language. In the, if you're doing TypeScript and JavaScript, in a way, it doesn't matter because we'll ESLint clean it all up. So your choice won't get preserved into the commit. Uh, so, uh, you know, so we can, so with, with something like TypeScript, uh, but with, Python, I had a, a big problem with Python but because of the file which had used tabs many years ago. And the system that used tabs, and I'm trying to convert this old code from Python 2 to Python 3, and I um, found that uh, some other code interpreted tabs a different way. And of course, in Python, the, number, the indent is really very uh, semantics. And so it's a, so Python code, uh, just tabs end up being too dangerous. So we have to go with, with spaces. <laughs> so here we have the answer, yeah. the ultimate answer from someone who should know. So um, going back into history, when we talk about uh, the time when you invented the World Wide Web and worked on it, um, did, you, did you have the imagination back then that it will become such a big thing uh, over, the, over the time? Yep. Uh, I planned, well, you could see the load on the first server went up by a factor of 10 every uh, every year for the first three years. So I planned the web. And in fact, I, uh, I imagined that there would be a uh, huge developer conference uh, in Berlin around, around now. But I made a mistake. I thought it would be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I got it wrong. Uh, so no, I call second plan. But, <laughs> uh, but there's, um, it was because the web grew as a result of other people's creativity. I, you know, I just made the platform the the explosion of, of actual content and stuff on it was, um, was driven by, other, by um, 
Yeah, all the crazy people out there. <laughs> Is there, is there anything, um, like, uh, thank you very much for this transition of Web 1 to Web 2 to what is going to be Web 3.0 uh, 3, 3 and so on. Um, is there anything f in, in Web 1.0 um, that you would have uh, done differently with the knowledge of today? Well, I used the domain names system. And at the time, it was managed by John Postel in a very uh, organized way. It was uh, that, yeah, it wasn't... Uh, the domain name system wasn't just a, uh, just a fighting ground for, for, uh, for, for real estate investors. And so uh, you know, the idea that everybody in the world could get themselves a domain name cheaply. Mm. And the other problem with the domain name, of course, system is that it was famously uh, boasted about, no, it's for rent. You, know, you, can, you can rent out Timbal.com for uh, this year, but somebody else might have it next year. And they were almost uh, uh, sort of proud of that, but actually, that meant that as part of a name of a of a document, then the the main name system has got has had problems. So if yeah, so that's okay. But maybe we we can fix it. Good to know. Um, and then transitioning to Web 2.0 and Web 3.0, and that's I think very interesting because it might be confusing for a lot of people when we. Um, when we look up Web3, then we often see uh, things like you know, blockchain, uh, metaverse, uh, and all of these things. Um, but actually, um, as in your definition, it is basically something totally different. Uh, um, maybe you can um, say a couple of words about, about how you really see the Web3.0 thing, mm -hmm. and um, um, what is your opinion on the other Web3 definition? So, uh, so when uh, I think Graham uh, in his blog said, "Yeah, we've got the, we're going to do the social networking on stuff or, 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 or Ethereum, Ethereum, and we're calling the project Web 3 that was not very helpful. Uh, so, um, and and so then people sort of seized on this and said, "Anything with blockchain, like we'll call it Web 3 because uh, it's short and snappy." Uh, for, uh, to a certain extent, it had this appeal of a fine new future. It was based on blockchain. They didn't call it, if they could have called it blockchain 3, that would have meant uh, people would have been a whole lot less confused. We wouldn't, wouldn't have to spend a few minutes in every conference saying, no, Web 3.0 actually is you know, it's not blockchain. And blockchain is not the web. Blockchain, so the thing people call Web 3, the blockchain based, they are, uh, there are various things that. They've tried Moxie Marlin, like the guy who, uh, uh, who made Telegram had a uh, had a go at building just a decentralized social app on top of a blockchain, and he found lots of reasons why actually uh, it doesn't work. That uh, blockchains blockchain is public. Every, if you put your your you have income, you know you get some medical data from your doctor. You put it in a solid pod. It's got to be private by default. Blockchain, you put it on blockchain, it's public, even if you, know, you can encrypt it. But everybody knows that you've done that tr transaction, so it's public, it's slow, it's, del it's made to be expensive deliberately. So really, uh, if you try to build apps like a solid apps on top of blockchain, it's, uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So it's just a shame that they called it Web3. Web3, our web 3 is solid protocol is, is not blockchain. Yeah, that's uh, interest it's an interesting take on that, so thank you for that. Um, when we talk about all of these topics, um, what we see is we don't talk uh, anymore so much only about the, the technology behind and the, the software development and the coding itself, um, but there are topics like ethics, social responsibility, and all of these things becoming more and more important also for software developers, for all technologists, uh, especially now we have... Um, the rise of AI solutions uh, going public and so on and so on. So what is your take on that? I mean, obviously, Solid is a, is a project that uh, pays into that uh, narrative that, uh, uh, you know, uh, owning your own data is very important. And so this whole um, yeah. ethics and security and privacy the, thing. The, the, the ethical issues, there's the human rights issues, if you like it. Uh, uh, my ability to be happy, a sovereign individual on the internet. Mm. Uh, it's a 
to be, be able to express myself, to be able to keep my private data private, to be able to communicate with whoever I wanted. So that's, yeah, that, that's basically Solid is grounded on ethical principles. And, you, and one of them is beneficent app, as I mentioned. Uh, so if you, when you're making your app, uh, the decisions as a developer you're making, are they for the user? Are you trying to make it so this app, if you were using it yourself, it would do all the things that you would want? Or are you actually trying to distract the user to go and buy a car <laughs> <laughs> instead of finishing their homework? So, so, if, so I, I think a lot of developers get, uh, end up realizing, uh, wait a moment, you know, what I'm doing isn't helping my users. It's just, it's, it's, it's helping the advertising system. It's helping them in my, my advertising, but my, all the clickbait I produce with my app. Mm. So you know, if you find yourself like that, don't stop doing that. Get another job. Go and work in the ecosystem building apps which are beneficent. Yeah, it's, uh, it's horrible, the whole clickbait thingy and so. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so um, what's your take on, on, on governance in, in that regard? I mean, obviously, we have uh, responsibility as individuals of software developers, technologists, and so on. Um, what's your take on, on um, regulation by the public, uh, especially now when we have things like uh, uh, you know, uh, the whole AI topic, and mm -hmm. uh, then in the European Union, we get the EU, uh, European Union AI Act, and these kind of things. What, what role should, should internet governance play? So, yeah, so, uh, so when people ask about, when you get uh, po politicians trying to figure out how to regulate AI, then uh, they get, they don't understand how a lot of things work. They don't understand what the possibilities are. They don't understand how things can be rewired and, or, or not. And so that it's tricky. So one of the things we have to do is you have to work with your local politicians and people writing policy to help them. You sit down with them uh, when, they, when they're writing, if they are writing policy. Writing policy to, uh, um, to about uh, is so new, it's really hard. You, know, you can't write a law that nobody should make an AI which takes over the world, but because you know, because we don't understand how to, how to apply that. But however, when you look up, think about the AI work that works for me. So when I was talking to a bunch of policymakers around a table at, um, at, uh, at a workshop a little, a little while ago, uh, and the uh, and so when we talked about, well, I talked about the idea of hey, your AI could work for you just like your doctor works for you or just like a lawyer works for you, then their eyes lit up. They say, yeah, actually, you know, we have, there's an expectation that doctors work for you. And there's a, there's, and there's a le and there's laws that doctors work for you, and there's and law and lawyers too. And so if the doctors have the, the Hippocratic Oath, the idea that a doctor is, is ethically and legally bound to work for you, uh, we, we know how to say that. We've got those words. So we can make the, we can make, regulations that say, just like a doctor, your AI assistant must work for you. We, and, uh, we know, and, we, uh, and so we know how to, uh, to measure that. You guys will find, rapidly find out how to build it. And, and so, so with that sort of things, when you can take over the idea of agency and, you know, mm. and, uh, and being somebody's agent then from another company, then, then making the regulations is easy. Yeah. And staying at the topic of AI, I mean, w w in your opinion, what are the, what are the most um, uh, important impacts it will have on uh, not just the world, but uh, for software developers, uh, specifically for, for people who, who build software, how, how the role of software developers might change with the rise of, mm. of AI tools? It, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It's, uh, I find it pretty freaky in a way when you put <laughs> typing into your editor with, with code pilot turned on. Uh, I, I, my, my example was I, I was writing a blog about the, inten the intention economy, which is the thing Doc Searles writes about. And I started off saying, just talking about Doc Searles, I said, Doc Searles, the uh, creator of the co creator of the Coke Q train manufacturer, 
manifesto, comma, and then on the next line, it suggested, basically the rest of the blog, <laughs> it suggested, wrote a book about the uh, intention economy, where the intention economy is an attempt to change the way the markets work and give much more power to the buyer, and so on, and then, then and I, and so on, and I, so, yeah, that's, uh, and then even when I uh, talked about solid, it, then, then GPT, um, Copilot gave me a, uh, a pretty good uh, understanding of, uh, about how the relationship between solid intention economy. So yeah, that's. Uh, on the other hand, all of that, all of the things that the AI can do in competing, uh, is, is, is in a way, grunge work, in a way, mm -hmm. and so uh, it's, it's tough that uh, if it's the creative thing, is is you know, is maybe. Uh, Maybe we'll be able to create stuff much faster because we'll be able to create the map, just define it, and then get AI to fill in lots of the pieces. Uh, maybe there'll be places where AI it turns out actually we're surprised that it actually isn't isn't so good. I hope it'll be good. At, I I'm, I hope the uh, uh, Copilot will be really good at writing tests because writing tests are really really important and really really boring. And so uh, as you know, as a something you learn to do, and you give kudos, you give hand out, you know, prizes to the people in the team that have written lots of tests, because yeah, so if Copilot can do that, that would be, uh, that would be, that would be neat. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, the combination of AI and quantum computing will be interesting in the future, I suppose. Mm. Um, when we talk about um, building, building products, building software, building actually solutions for making people you know, um, happier or making their lives easier because at the end, like, you know, technology obviously should, should serve, uh, serve us. Um, when I started as a web developer uh, 15, 20 years ago, it was, I would say, way more simple to focus on, on one area or to focus on, on your personal development in the career. Um, now we have so many more, let's say, frameworks, programming languages, use cases, tools, many more roles. With the, with the rise of AI, we will have even more opportunities and so on. And I get uh, often asked by young people how to, uh, what to focus on to, mm -hmm. to become you know, a, a great software developer or a, a someone who builds, builds great products. Like it's, it's so complex, where to start? Should you focus on, you know, now, knowing a lot of things a little bit or going deep into one area of tech. Um, do you have any advice for the young people in the audience, also the ones who, who will watch this later, like what, what, how to kind of uh, don't go crazy with all the opportunities that are out there? I think I'm not going to say, oh, you should focus on this given platform, this given framework. Uh, frameworks come and go, uh, and so it's uh, so. In fact, it's good to have, from the point of view of you know, running open source projects uh, of CTO of a company that uh, that needs talent. It's good, in a way, for there to be a whole variety of talents. It's good for some people. We need generalists, and we need people deep. So, or you can be a T-shaped person that's got a lot, quite a lot of, you, you've got quite a good grand, general understanding, uh, but, and then there's just one thing. Or a pie-shaped person where you've got two things so that you've got these. So different shaped people are really useful in the world, people who specialize in different things. So if you find, and if you find something, you're playing with some idea, and it kind of, and it gets, and it, and it keeps, t you keep going back to it, then make it one of your things. Make, you know, even if it's a thing on the side, keep, if, uh, keep it going. Because when you know, the creative energy you get when you've got an intriguing idea is just really fun. It'll, you know, you'll get the endorphins back if you can, from actually making it, making it appear. And it, you may be, it's good to follow your own creative ideas because you, know, you may end up making a tool or a platform or architecture which is actually new, nobody else knew, knew about it. So also be, 
Also be happy to make notes. Don't, you don't always have to follow. We need mixtures of leaders and followers. We need people who are, we need mixtures of uh, starters and finishers. And so we need people, broad people and narrow people. So I wouldn't encourage you to be a bit one particular shape. <laughs> I mean, this is also how, how, how the web started, right? Back then. Mm. This is how the web started. Yep. I suppose, yeah, there was a frustration. Yeah, that, yeah, there's a niggly sort of so that I just have to find a way to be able to, uh, to get to write the code. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, we have here an audience of professional software developers. And, um, but when we talk about you know, the, the pace that, that uh, technology uh, advances with, then um, obviously we see many non-tech people who go into software development with, uh, um, let's say, low-code solutions or who want to educate themselves uh, to, keep rel to, to stay relevant on the, on the job market but also on, on the world at all. Like, um, how important do you see the, um, that we get, let's say, non-techies, non-developers into the space of understanding how software itself works, how technology works, um, not just how to use the computer, but mm -hmm. also understand the logic behind? Uh, so there's, uh, there's some professions, some skills, of course, which you may, you may not think of as being core developer skills, but certainly designer, mm. obviously. There's a huge overlap between so that there's some people regard, say, I know I, I don't code, I'm a designer. And some people say, I don't design, I'm code. In a way, I, I feel that I can't, I've never, been, I've never had the patience for people to say, I shouldn't code until waiting for a designer to tell me how to design it. So I would much prefer to just design it back in my head, imagine it on the screen. And in fact, so I think I'm, you know, for when I'm designing code that I use, I'm a pretty good designer because I know what I want. And so what those combinations of um, uh, but certainly uh, bringing in uh, d designers, bringing in artists, and bringing in social scientists, in fact, when you're thinking about, when you're writing, when you bring out what, what happens when somebody clicks, on a link will have a clicks on your button, then the designer may be involved with whether you actually find the button. And, and then you, the engineer may be involved in what happens when you click on the button. But the social impact on humanity when that button appears and which color it is. You know, the fact there have been huge changes in the social effect of, in, you know, the, the, the fact Instagramming, uh, uh, when you put, you know, you put a like button on Instagram and you end up with uh, suddenly, the, the social effect of teenage girls' mental health plummeting when they use Instagram, for example. And you, so, to what extent? So, you need to understand all that too. But we talked about web science, where you need to actually understand the whole web. You need all of the all of the different uh, fields, and, uh, and it's only, only if you look at the social effect, the large scale effects, really are you being responsible. Thank you, thank you. Um, do you. Do you think there should be some, some, some uh, general guiding principles uh, when we um, build uh, software, when we build products? Should there be some, some underlying guiding principles um, that everyone should think of um, while doing projects? Um, well, use standards. Use the standards. Use, you're used to using HTML and HTTP. Because if you're, if you're uh, every now and again, somebody thinks of something, a protocol, where actually they could use HTTP, but they invent something uh, new. Like, oh, they don't use, or call it HTTP. Or like Matrix. I mean, you know, Matrix works, but they don't use HTTP URLs. It would actually work much better if they did use HTTP URLs instead of Matrix URLs, because they're actually using HTTP. So you use, you use the standards, and now, now you sell it. Look at, look. Look at putting in next to your login with F, login with G, and put add in login with solid. And, uh, yeah, but also ethical guidelines like uh, things about social responsibility, like not just technical guidelines mm -hmm. that people should follow when they build software. Uh, I think uh, I suppose uh, well uh, to uh, one way to think about it is when you write 
where, 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 when you're writing your line of code, you're writing a function, then they sort of think, act locally, but think globally. Uh, when you're writing this function, uh, code it as though you, you are part of a huge, wonderful, very powerful collaborative system which people are using to make uh, effective democracy effect and uh, effective science. Which is imagine it's part of a system which is where which is allowing humanity to function much better than it is at the moment. Okay, thank you. I mean, we are coming uh, slowly to the end. Um, as uh, yeah, time is flying by. I just uh, uh, wanted to talk a bit about uh, the community aspect. Um, I mean, we consider uh, here we are developers as a huge community of, of uh, software developers. Um, how important do you see uh, happenings like these um, for the progress of one's career, like you know, uh, being part of a community, engaging, going on stage? Um, I often meet people who, let's say, are super intelligent and have some interesting projects, have something to say, but maybe shy away to share it on stage because, um, yeah, maybe being a bit introvert or so, and. Uh, yeah, so maybe you can um, encourage these people to kind of, you know, mm. go out on stage and, and share their knowledge with that. Because I'm sure it also was something that helped you to, to go through the career. I think that, well, if you reckon, yes, if you, if you come to the things like this uh, and you find it's useful and, and, and you realize that there's something that, uh, the, that uh, you know that other people would find useful, then think about, uh, it's also about up here. You know? uh, it's, uh, so, and there's, and there's different parts of it. You, and so, but, but you can blog, you can, uh, you can do them. I like um, screen sharing videos where you take somebody through. Um, uh, uh, so you put those, put, when you've just debugged something, for example, you know, so different parts of your life, you don't have to come up on stage and do it. Also, but you know, there's, also, there's other ways you can share it. You can put, you can put high res. Uh, vi videos about what about how you debug something. We found in a team sometimes doing and we'll just a little open source team that we've uh, we, when somebody has got a problem they they start, then we do screen share with the group and everybody around the table is is, has got a, is part of the solution that 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 can be really powerful. So all, all kinds of different ways of meeting and so when you when you if you've got Things like that, which you think uh, will actually be useful for a wider audience, then why not come and, and bring, bring the here, bring the ideas, bring the, bring the insights that you got, however you got them. Then, yeah. yeah, and it's also not, it's uh, bi-directional, right? Because uh, many speakers that I speak to say, hey, I'm not going just on stage to share my knowledge. Mm -hmm. That is one important uh, part and one side of the medal. But they also get feedback on what they are doing and so on that they then can incorporate in their in their project, so it's also uh, like as a speaker, and if, if you share your knowledge, you will get something back because someone will will um, yeah provide you some 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 feedback to and insights to your to your mm. to your project, right? It definitely, yeah, definitely. It's okay, two way street. Yeah. Good. Then um, we are coming to an end. Um, I want to say thank you to all of you for joining us in this this fireside chat. Um, I wish you a wonderful full, full congress ahead, a wonderful two days. And uh, Sir Tim, uh, I think we are all honored to have you here as a guest at Real Developers World yeah. Congress. So thank you so much for being our guest. It's a privilege. <laughs> for me. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, well. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you, Sir, for all the good questions. Thank you, Chris. The stage is yours again. Yes, and it's going on at the stage right now. That we All right, then the story goes, continues. Now that we fix identity, we're going to fix commerce and payment. And there's a 20 minute break. So if you need to do something, go outside, take a look at the expo, get some food have a bio break, whatever you need to do, and then we see you back here at 10.50. Thank you.